As we take our seat this morning, glory, glory, glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Are you glad to be in God's presence this morning? Do you believe that there will be a shift in your life? You're not sounding like you believe. Can you say it loud and clear to yourself? My life will turn around this morning. I will experience a change. I can't hear you say, I will experience a change. My life will not be the same. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm so happy to be here this morning. Thank God for His grace. And this is really a great house. So it's good to be here this morning. And thank all the fathers, even though many are not around on seats. And thank God for this great privilege. Um, amen. Thank you for inviting me. I was, I was telling my brother I don't like traveling. You have to tell me about a month ahead to process coming to Lagos. I don't really like Lagos. So I always have to process every of my trips outside of Abuja. Abuja is a place to be anyway. So please try and come to Abuja if you have not been to Abuja. This traffic is not... Uh, we are not used to it. <laughs> I pray that that visitation for ease will come to Lagos in Jesus' name. So this morning, quickly, because of our time, let's just have the word of God. I'll be very brief because I want us to pray. In this service, both the first and second service, we are going to really be praying because I'm trusting God by the word of God that I don't know and I don't care what has happened thus far in 2019. Your greatest turnaround, your greatest change, your greatest testimony is about to start. Please let your hymn sound loud and clear. I'm here to announce to someone here because God is about to deposit an excellent spirit in your life. Uh, you know, when you come to church too often and you hear prophecies, you can, you can assume that it's just one of those words because you have had it so many times. If you're an average believer and you grew up in a Christian home, you can go to church more than five times a week. So you hear God bless you, you hear powerful words every time that by the time they say it, you can lose consciousness and not value it. But you see, I tell people, Whenever you don't know a man or where the man is coming from, be afraid of him. When you know a man, you can predict him. When you know a man, you can tell, you can be used to what he does. But when you don't know where he's coming from, be afraid of him. Especially when he does not have a name. Every man that ever spoke in the life of many people through scriptures, most of them, their names were not mentioned. You will hear a certain man. The man that changed the life of Saul was a servant. His name and identity was not necessary. But the information that he gave to Saul was what took him from being an ordinary boy to become the first king of Israel. You don't really know my name, oh, so you should be afraid. So again, I came to prophesy to somebody that by the time you are living here this morning, you will be carrying the spirit of excellence. Daniel chapter 6 verse 3. Daniel chapter 6 verse 3. I'll be a bit fast. So please stay with me because I want us to have at least 5 to 10 minutes of prayer. Daniel chapter 6 verse 3. The Bible says, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents, the princes, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the old realm. When we were in primary school and in secondary school, our academic ratings and I'm sure many of us will remember, was divided into five. Number one was excellent. Number two is what? Uh -uh. We didn't go to good primary schools. Very good. Uh -huh. Thank God. Some people went to my kind of primary school. Number three is what? Number four? Number five? Poor. 
And so when we begin to talk about excellent, it means that a man has called up to the point whereby we can say that he has gained mastery. It means that a man has called up to the point whereby he has done better than many of the people. To the point that even the master, the teacher looks at him and says, oh, he has done very well. And that was the kind of spirit that the Babylonians looked at the man Daniel and said that he possessed. It is good that I explain to you the concept of Babylon at that point. Because Babylon was a city that was seen as the capital of the world as at that time. It was a city built by sorcery and witchcraft. Anyone who would walk in Babylon was no ordinary person. In Daniel chapter 1, you will see the recruitment system. People who would stand before the king were no ordinary people. They were eunuchs, different men. He said, find among them young men that had not been defiled. Those were the people that were going to stand before the king of Babylon. Masters in their own right. And among everybody on that day, including the men in Babylon who had been trained to master witchcraft, to master sorcery, to master magics, the king still looked and said that there's an excellent spirit in this one. It means by the time they placed him against every marking scheme, he was always meeting the target. What kind of man is that that he knows everything including what he was taught and what he was not taught? Because later on we'll begin to see about Daniel that even the dreams of a king that he did not share Daniel knew it. It was at that point that I realized that excellence is not really an action. Excellence is propelled by a spirit. It is why it is called an excellent spirit. Every man is just a container. What manifests in him is the influence of the spirit in control. That is why when Daniel began to operate, you will find that in Daniel chapter 5, later on, they said he understood, he could dissolve doubt because of the spirit that was in him. When you see a man failing, it's not just because he's a failure. It's not because he doesn't know anything. There is a spirit in operation. That was the kind of man Daniel was. He had what they could call the spirit of the gods. He knew everything. He understood everything. There was no place you could place him that he did not know what to do. I had a friend like that when we were in university. His name was Oriofe. Oriofe was in biochemistry. But he was teaching math students tutorials. Nobody understood how Oriofe just knows everything. Later on, we knew that Oriofe was in UI teaching master students. And yet, he was an undergraduate. You see, when a man begins to manifest that kind of dimension, it is not talent that brought him there. It's a spirit in operation. That was the kind of person Daniel was. Daniel was not a man that was operating anything natural. He was only showing what was inside him. Whenever you see a man manifest a visible reality, I want you to note it again. It's the influence of what has possessed him. Whenever a man struggles to do anything, it is always on the foundation of knowledge. And I'm trying to tie two things together this morning. Because one of the things that you want to ask God for your life is that you want to know. When you bring two people to the same place, and somebody knows how to do a thing and you don't know how to do it you will always see how clear the difference is the difference between two people either success or failure excellence or failure as it were is always on the foundation of knowledge when a man is struggling he does not know something so when you see that Daniel possessed an excellent spirit and he could enter 
coming into a kingdom and solve riddles and solve dreams he knew something that everybody in that territory did not know men are sought after for what they know not only what they do it is why this morning if there is anything you are going to pray about is that God will release a dimension of knowledge into your life so that you can begin to know what you have not known because the problem with knowledge is that if you know too late it is of no use imagine a man who is sick and he has been paralyzed all his life only to find out at 80 that there was a drug that could cure him when a man knows too late it is better off that he did not know because he will live on the regret of knowing too late every tragedy in a man's life is traceable to what he does not know every excellence also is traceable to what he has come to know that was the story of daniel he knew something that all the princes and presidents did not know and on the foundation of that knowledge he became a god in babylon that every king wanted him in their system i'm prophesying to somebody here today you will not learn too late ah you don't understand that prayer i pray for you again this morning the knowledge that you need to excel in every face that god has placed upon you you will not learn it too late there are three things that you must know this morning and those were the three things that daniel knew nobody could take it away from him number one he knew his god Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 it says they that know their God they are strong and they do exploits knowing God means that you know your system of advantage because one of the things that you need to understand about life is that hard work alone does not bring excellence check the life of those who are the most studious it does not always mean that they are always the most successful it means that everybody that ever gets certain results they get it by an advantage go to places where the real battle occurs and that is where you will know that people don't come there joking go to the places where they submit proposal for contracts and then you will know that everybody is coming to that place with the advantage you will see people go to bring charms you will see people pray all night because they know that favor is not something you buy alone by good looks there's a lot that is involved so daniel understood his advantage i ask you a question today do you really trust the advantage of god do you know him so well and if i may ask you what do you even know about god because until you get a grab and understand everything that God entails, the realities of God that he can produce in your life will not come forth. Daniel knew his God. That is why there will be fire and he will say, throw me inside. My God is able to save me. Even if he chooses, I don't care. People that know God have grown to the point whereby they not only live for him, they are ready to die for him. That's a dimension of knowledge. So Daniel understood his advantage. He understood that God can be an advantage. God in your life is not something that others should mock you for. It is what people should be envious about you for. That you know God is an advantage. You can take God to an exam hall and succeed. You can take him to an interview and succeed. You can carry his presence like a charm. That people will see you and be afraid that what dimension of man is this. It was what they said about Jesus. What manner of man is this. That even the sea, the waves, they obey him. That is a man who knows his God. I present a question again to you. Do you know God? What is it that men of old know about God? That they stand upon places and say, Before God whom I stand, there will be no rain. What did Elijah know about God that you don't know? Because if a man can stop the rain, how come you cannot stop ordinary malaria in your family? What has he come to know about God that you have not discovered? Men who boast about God, how come you are in his presence and yet you have not discovered the advantage that produces the result? Because every man, when he faces the battle of life, must bring an advantage. 
it is how people rule and dominate by advantage for some people it was their family that became the advantage what i'm telling you today is that if you know god god can be your advantage have you learned the concept of divine healing that by god i can be all you need to know god to that level have you learned the concept of divine prosperity that there is a power of god that makes people wealthy have you learned the concept of favor from god that god can anoint a man with the oil of gladness that he will begin to supersede his fellow there is a knowledge of god that you have not come to know that is the cause of the limitation of your life the day you get hold of it it pushes you forward they that know their god are strong and they do exploits that was what daniel knew he knew his god David said, by God, I can run through a troop. I can scale through, through a wall. How can a young boy face a Goliath? He knew something that many of us have not known. And that is why we face battles of our life, timid, not knowing God. The day you come to know him, you are at an advantage. Can you lift up your hand to God today and say, God, show me mercy. I must know you. Number two, Daniel knew his enemy. As you understand your advantage, it is critical that you also understand your enemy. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11, it says we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Many people live their life without thinking and knowing that there is somebody who is going with, whose activity is actually to attack their excellence there is somebody who does not do anything but to make sure that you always fail it is important that you begin to know that enemy it is by your knowledge of the enemy is how you will be able to build a shield of protection over yourself so Daniel understood that he could not afford to be careless because the enemy is so wise sometimes he will sponsor what appears good and yet it is wrong so what happened in the life of daniel they were presented with a portion of the king's meal excuse me how can the king's food be defilement but daniel understood that it could be for everybody but this is my own enemy do you know your enemy because sometimes what sounds good is not sound or good the highest form of wisdom is not to be able to differentiate between right or wrong is to differentiate between right and almost right because many times your sponsor can be the enemy and you think that the height that you have achieved is from God sometimes what the enemy has just done is to place you in a place that you are not prepared for so that you can fall faster know your enemy so Daniel understood his enemy he knew what was defilement he knew what was not meant for him he knew everything that he had to know about the enemy so when the offer was placed he would not bargain with it Many people live their life carefree, not understanding that every time a man is born for a purpose, there is an enemy that is always watching. And the enemy can be so silent for years, watching his life to ensure that he never steps into what God has ordained him to enter. Daniel understood his enemy. Number three, Daniel knew himself. He understood purpose. He understood identity. He understood his assignment. The moment you begin to understand purpose, identity, assignment, you will begin to understand process. It is by understanding process that you will not compare yourself with anybody. I said it earlier Daniel knew himself knew his destiny knew that he cannot take out of the king's portion he knew that he is different he said others may bow down I cannot bow down you must understand yourself so that you can understand what God is doing for you 
You see, many times we don't know what God is doing to us. And so when things happen in our life, we begin to condemn the works of God. And we look at him like that man that, that was the third servant when the master gave them talent. And we look at him and say, God, you're a wicked God. In 1 Samuel chapter 22 verse 3, 1 Samuel chapter 22 verse 3, David said, he, he separated himself from his father and mother. And he said, I want to be alone until I understand what God is doing to me. What is the reason why God brought you to Lagos? What is the reason why he set you up in your family? What is the reason why he chose a certain place of employment? There are many things that you know you never influenced. Let me tell you something very vital today. It's strategic to who you will become. It is time for you to begin to know yourself in the places that God has called you. The Bible was saying in 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 20 to 22. 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 20 to 22. He said, in a great man's house, there are vessels. In a great man's house, there are vessels. Vessels of gold, of silver, of wood, and of earth. None of these vessels choose themselves. Listen to me today. None of you, you did not choose many things in your life. That is telling you that those things that have been made concerning you are strategic to who you will become what matters to God is that is the vessel unto honor or unto dishonor it doesn't matter if it's gold and I am wood God made me like that it doesn't matter if it's silver and I am earth God made me like that because you can be gold and at the end of the day you are to dishonor are you, are you understanding what I'm saying so in a great man's house there are four vessels of gold of silver of wood and of earth some to dishonor and some to dishonor what matters is that what happens at the end are you to honor are you to dishonor but when a man identifies that he is gold his passage becomes the furnace listen carefully to me it is why you should never compare yourself to anybody as a man is called out to be gold in the great house his passage is the furnace in proverbs chapter 17 verse 3 when a man is called out to be silver his passage is the crucible that is how he will be melted and made the way silver is made is different from the way gold will be made when a man is made of wood his passage will be a lot of breaking and chiseling so sometimes the one that is being caught can be having the one that is passing through fire say it's not just fire this one that they keep cutting me and cutting me and cutting me and when the man is made of earth it is the hand that breaks him a lot of things will be taken out of him that is why you should know yourself what is your passage when you gain understanding of yourself you begin to understand what God is doing to you the reason for the separation the reason why some people will never like you the reason why some people will envy you that was everything that Daniel passed through his life envy, hatred but he was being made to be a man that could stand upon a mountain and voice the utterances of God what is God doing to you? Because if you don't know it, you will think that God is wicked. You will think that you are not born for a purpose. But all those makings are there to make sure that you step into destiny and God's plan for your life. When a man knows himself, he will squander opportunities. When a man knows himself, every opportunity that God brings to him, he will maximize it. Many times God brought to you opportunities of great relationship. You did not understand. You squandered it. John the Baptist knew himself. He knew that he was not called to be a priest. Despite the fact that his father was a priest. He said, I am one. I am a voice crying out in the wilderness. And he made his life like that of a man on people called him mad but he understood who himself who he was he said he must increase while i must decrease and upon that wisdom was how he was fulfilling destiny many of us have not come to understanding of who we are and when a man has not learned any of these three early in life he does not know his advantage he does not know the strategy of his enemy and he does not know himself all that happens to him is that he will be missing opportunities that he could have won. 
Because excellence is always traceable to what a man knows. The Bible says winter is past. The rain is over and gone. There are many opportunities that if a man should miss, he will really never get it back. I told someone something one day. I said, every time we pray for restoration, I think we need to understand what that prayer means. Because I submit it to you today, it is easier for God to create a new thing than to actually restore. This is what happens when a man misses an opportunity. And let me paint the picture clearly to you so that you can understand that it is wrong for you to miss opportunities. There are many people tied to every action. That I am here now, it means I'm not somewhere. Are we together? That you are here now, it means that you are getting this. If you are not here, will you be getting this? That means that because you are sitting where you are sitting, somebody is not sitting there. Are we together? So if you are not sitting here, who will be there? Somebody else. So when there is an opportunity there and you did not fit in, it means that somebody else did what? Came into that place. Now, the fact that somebody else came into that place also means that for that person, it was not somewhere. Now, look at the ripple effect of every action as it changes the face of many people. I've only described it in two places. But I can assure you, if a driver was to be driving and he drives wrong, he can kill 16 people. Now, the children of those 16 people, because of that action, may not fulfill many things because of that action. Their own children may not fulfill many things again. And so you see a ripple effect of an action. Okay. So when a man has missed an opportunity, you will be afraid of the ripple effects that has created. Such that if a man comes back and begins to ask for restore, it means that the man that has maximized the opportunity, we almost need to bring him back again and say, okay, that opportunity we gave you, let's take it away from you. But God won't do that. So it is easier for God to say behold that we do a new thing than actually to say I will restore. Because many people have already maximized the ones that you missed. Let me close with Luke chapter 24 from verse 12 to 31 and then we go and pray after Jesus Christ had died the Bible said that two disciples were walking to a mouse and as they were walking they were discussing what had transpired the killing of Jesus They were just walking, discussing. They were carried away with what they were saying. And all of a sudden, the Bible said, Jesus Christ of Nazareth appeared in their midst. Listen, when you talk about something constantly, it will appear. That's the power of confession. That's just, it's not part of the message, but note it. When you talk about something constantly, it will do what? It will appear. So as they were talking about Jesus, he appeared in their midst. And Jesus began to talk about himself to them. But this is the scary part. They were disciples of Jesus. And yet, they did not know it was Jesus. Jesus had to use a word for them. He said, how come you are so slow in heart? we can celebrate about Jesus being the son of God but one of the things that I think we need to celebrate about Jesus is his patience how can you be with people for three and a half years and you are standing with them telling them about yourself and yet they didn't see you you will be surprised that many people who are in church who are slow in heart the word for liberation coming out every Sunday boom and they are not processing it at all. Coming into the presence of God, living the same way, every year, year in, year out. And Jesus looked at them. How come you are slow in heart? They even began to abuse Jesus. Don't you know what is happening? That demand Jesus. So they were telling Jesus 
about Jesus. Do you understand? They are, they are telling Jesus. So Jesus was explaining Jesus to them. And for two hours, because the distance of where they were going was about two hours. And all that was transpiring in that place was an explanation of himself. I want to ask you, if you, is two hours too much or two hours, yes, is it too much for you to see Jesus? How many minutes do you need to see Jesus for your life to turn around? If Jesus was to appear here, will you listen to him explaining about himself? Is it not issues of your life that say, see, let me tell you something today. Now, Jesus' solution, Ila, was working with these people for two hours and all that he was explaining was about himself. I'm 100% sure these people had problems in their life. I'm on, at least for the fact that they were even slow in heart. There were many things they would have been slow about. They had crisis in their life, but they spent two hours trying to discover what they should have known three and a half years ago. And the Bible said, when they got home, they broke bread. And immediately he broke the bread. Their eyes opened. And immediately they saw that he was the one. He vanished. That is the tragedy of many people. By the time you discover what you should have known years ago, the opportunity has vanished. Jump on your feet. Lift up your hands to God. Lord, this morning, I refuse to learn late. What I should have known five years ago, what I should have known ten years ago, that I have not known in this service this morning, let there be a download. Go ahead and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. You are not praying, you know. You should pray better than you are doing. Pray louder, pray louder. Pray louder. Pray louder. Pray louder. You should cry. Somebody should cry out. Oh. Somebody should cry out. Oh. You should pray better than you are praying. When you know it will determine where you stay. What you know will determine what you do. The labor of fools will read them because they don't know the way to the city. You have two minutes to cry out to the great one this morning. It is not enough to know the importance of prayer. But how come you are not praying? There is still something you have not come to know. Please pray. One minute, one minute prayer is not too long to shift something. Pray until you know that you are praying. Oh. Pray until everything within you know that there is a download this morning. A wise man said, if you don't pray, you will be a prayer. What don't you know that is the limiting factor of your life? What don't you know that is stopping you from stepping into things that you are supposed to step into? What don't you know that is stopping you from unnessing the power and the life of God? It is this kind of morning that you cry out to the great one. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and talk to him. Open my eyes to see. I pray, oh, pray, oh, pray. Oh. Open my ears to hear. Oh. I want to know your will. Oh. I want to know the way. Oh. Open my eyes to see. Ah, Jesus. Open my eyes to hear. Oh. I want to know your will. Oh. Ah, 
I want to know the path. Oh. Shaka pata la brekete le brendo ko so brekete la bosha. I'm giving you minutes to pray this morning. That your eyes of understanding is opened. That you know where to go. You know what to do. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. I must know God. I must know God. I must know the system of my advantage. If you pray well, the power of God will visit you where you are. If you pray well, your eyes will be open. Oh. That brother, you need to pray. Oh. You need to pray. Oh. You need to pray. Oh. Jesus, open my eyes to see. Oh. Open my ears to hear. It's not when opportunities are gone that I will begin to see it. Echo to peleke teke day. Two more minutes. We have two more minutes. Somebody needs to cry out. Why are you gentle this morning? You have prayed too quietly all through this year, and you have not seen the result. Can somebody travel? Open my eyes to see. Open my ears to hear. I want to know your will. Ah, I want to know your part. Sound your truth to me. Show me what to do. I want to know the way. I want to know your part. Sakapala Kotolebo. One more minute. It's one more minute. Final push. Don't be tired. Don't be tired. Be angry in your spirit. I must know. The Holy Spirit is a Noah. I did not receive the Holy Spirit for a joke. I rely on the advantage of the Noah. Ekoto. Prekatelekotos. Suprekatelekete. Somebody get serious. We are talking destiny here. Don't waste life. Don't waste time. How long will you walk as a fool upon the earth? You cannot do much except by a system of advantage. I will know. Open my eyes to see. Open my ears to hear. I want to know your will. I want to know your path. Oh. 30 more seconds. Open my eyes to see you. Oh. Jesus, open my ears to hear. Ah, I choose to know your will. I choose to know your path. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Listen to me, you must know. If you don't know, you won't know what God is doing to you. I've explained that. I didn't know what God was doing to me. But I'll be foolish if I don't understand it now. First, my mother was giving birth to females, so she had to pull a covenant with God give me a son and I will give him back to you and that's what God always does sometimes he will bring denials so that you can reach a level of covenant it was what happened to Anna he needed a son Samuel and so he had to make sure her soul was vexed to the point that she could bargain with divinity it was upon that bargain that the greatest prophet came to ground one whose words did not fall to the ground he had to take that luring many times you don't understand god has been luring you how else would you pray if there's no crisis many of us know our prayer life despite crisis what if there's no crisis i didn't know what he was doing so strategically first he made sure that i was a child of covenant he now gave me a mother who did not joke with everywhere that I went through life. Primary school, she will ask God, which one should he go to? I remember when I was going to secondary school, I did not want to go to the school that I went to. 
Never. I didn't like the school. It was the secondary school of my primary school. I wanted a new ground. But she said, no, we'll go and ask the prophet. Which school should he go to? And he said, take him to Shalom. I didn't know what he was doing. So by taking me to Shalom, he knew that I would meet certain boys. One of them is one of my great friends right now, Lawrence Oyo. For many of you that might know him. He strategically took me there so that I can encounter the boy that they had given up on. I didn't know what God was doing when he was surrounding me with the right friend. I didn't know. I didn't know what he was doing when he took me away from Ibado and launched me to Abuja. I wanted my comfort zone all the time. I did not understand. But I will be foolish now if now I don't know what he's doing. I've seen it open up unto me. So this was what you were doing. Thank God I didn't push your hand away. Many of you don't understand the denial. But it is part of the process. It is when a mother is trying to stop the child from sucking. It is because now it's time for the child to begin to eat solid food. That will produce his growth. You must know what God is doing to you. One minute again, lift up a cry unto God. I must know in this service. Go ahead and talk to him quickly.